Some 54 of the more than 200 hostages held captive by Hamas are from Thailand. Thailand provides almost all the foreign farm labor in Israel as part of a 2012 agreement with the Israeli government. The Thai hostages taken by Hamas were working in farms near the Gaza Strip. Scenes of devastation at the Kibbutz Berry in southern Israel after the terror attack by Hamas. Gunmen killed more than 100 people here, among them many Thai migrant workers. Thais are the largest single group of foreign dead and missing after the massacre, with 24 confirmed killed and 21 unaccounted for. And a quarter of the more than 200 hostages held by Hamas in Gaza are Thai. Thailand has organized evacuation flights for survivors, who tell of a desperate struggle to stay alive. I hid in a small room with 11 other people. We could hardly breathe. We took turns breathing through a small hole. Then three to four Hamas guys came back and they tried to unlock the door, but there were two locks. They tried to open the top one, but we all helped to hold on to the bottom lock. They started shooting through the door, but it was too thick. Then Israeli soldiers arrived to help. Thailand provides almost all the foreign farm labor in Israel. About 30,000 Thais work in the country's vegetable fields and dairy farms. I talked this over with my family. I won't return. I'll settle down at home. A lot of things are still bad. My mental health is still bad. Around 5,000 Thais were working in the area worst affected by the violence. One of the hardest hit agricultural areas was at the near Oz kibbutz, where Thais were among the 100 people killed or kidnapped. Israeli volunteers have had to step in to keep the milk supply going. Most of the staff of the dairy farm were Thailandis and they were massacred. Um, it just comes to show, like the Hamas terrorists that came in, they killed everyone. There are fears that if Thais choose to stay away long term, it could have a devastating impact on the Israeli economy. For many from Thailand, staying away is not really an option. Often they'd have to borrow tens of thousands of dollars to go to Israel. These Thais may have escaped the gunmen, but now it's a tough choice between staying safe and securing their livelihoods. And joining me now for more context is Punatri Jia Viryabunya. She's an assistant professor of anthropology at the Nakhon Panom University in Eastern Thailand. Professor Jia Viryabunya, how has news of Thai casualties in the Hamas terror attack been received in Thailand? Um, first of all, since um, early October this month, right, um, as the Northeastern religious or the Thai citizens, we are so sorry to hear about this news. It's a bad news, actually. Um, I think we were so shocked about the incident. Uh, as I heard that many Thai migrant workers, especially especially from my hometown, Nakhon Phanom province in the northeast of Thailand. They have, you know, bad lucks and they were hostage. And some of them uh, are lucky to come back to their countries, but a lot of their population still uh, in the uncertain condition. We, we are still hope that they are will be free right. soon. Uh, how, how important is working in Israel for Thai farm workers? You know, you have to understand that living and working in the northeastern region of Thailand, we have poor condition. We don't have much opportunities to make a decision. Uh, living mm -hmm. con condition is so difficult even to do agriculture, even to be as a rice farmer, we have uh, been neglected by the Thai state and don't talk about the social welfare. We are very poor with some of those resources. That's why ec economic reason drive the migrant workers to go far away from the countries and decide to go to the Middle East to find another job to find a new life and send the money back to their 
countries, which is Thailand. Do you think that following this uh, attack, this terror attack by Hamas, uh, Thai workers will reconsider if they should go and work in Israel, given the dangers that are uh, that are apparent over there? You know, it's a good question. I've been asking, and I if I have a chance to meet up with all the Thai migrant workers who just back from the Middle East, especially from Israel, you know, some of them can be divided into two groups. The first one who have encountered with the negative incidents, they would not decide to go back to Israel. But for those who still um, seek for a new life, who still want to get a high income to work in the Middle East, they still want to go back to Israel. You know, as we speak, there's at least uh, 54 Thai workers who have been held captive mm -hmm. by Hamas. What is the Thai government doing to get them back? I think the Thai government, led by Prime Minister Seta Thuristin and all the cabinet, I think they try so hard to try so many channels, so many ways to negotiate. Uh, as uh, I think they try to use two different levels of nego negotiation. The first one is formal diplomatic negotiation. And the second one, which is the um, uh, prime minister and the minister of the foreign affairs just uh, uh, spoke out to the media, to the Thai media, actually, that the Thai government also tried to use the informal negotiation try to send the representative of the Thai government back to Israel and negotiate with a uh, representative of the Hamas group. Right. We'll leave it there uh, for the time being and hope that uh, there is better news for Thai migrant workers and their families in Thailand. Thanks so much for joining us today with all of that context, Mrs. Punyatri Jia Virya Bunya. Thank you so much.